everybody, it's Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and in today's video we're going to be talking about the iconic little Fiat 500 or Cinquecento. It's one of the most popular conversions we do and today I've got a kit laid out on the floor here so we're going to give you a little bit of a tour of what our Fiat 500 kit looks like. Right, so I'm uh, sitting, I'm standing in a little Fiat 500. Uh, it's a uh, late 60s, early 70s, so this is a Fiat 500L, which I think stands for Lusso. Um, and anybody wondering uh, uh, what Cinquecento is, because that's what it is in Italian, it's just 500 in Italian. And where does 500 come from? Well, it's the little air-cooled engine that's in the back. It's 500cc. So originally, this is kind of a mini VW Beetle, really. It's an air-cooled engine, a little tiny thing that sits in the back there, only pushes out about 18 horsepower. Um, so it's not exactly fast. Um, then you've got a gearbox uh, down there, or a transaxle, to be you know, technically correct. And then in the front there, you've got your fuel tank and 12-volt battery. So exactly the uh, same sort of layout as a VW Beetle, but just squished to be a lot, lot smaller. And anybody that's a regular viewer out there and knows me well, you'll know I err on the side of wild when it comes to my conversions. That's not what this is. So if you want wild, go and see another video for five minutes because this is all about mild. This is a conversion we do. It's one of the most popular conversions we do, but it um, kind of simulates the similar performance of the original air-cooled engine with a bit more oomph, let's say, to keep up with modern traffic. And this is a city car. So anybody expecting 300 mile range, this is not it. So on that note, I think I'll get out of the car and I'll walk you through the conversion kit that's on the floor in front of me. Now I've got everything laid out in front of me here now and it's kind of in the order it goes in the car, um, but it's a little bit stretched out, let's say. Uh, let's start with a battery pack because small car means small battery pack. So what we've got here is one in the front and one in the back. That one uh, fits in the frontier. It bolts into the original bumper mounts and petrol tank mounts, and that is one Tesla module. Then in the rear, we've got two Tesla modules. So that's three Tesla modules, uh, modules in total, giving you around about 15 kilowatt hours of battery pack, which is small in electric car uh, terms. But don't forget, this is really designed as a city car. So, you know, 50 mile range, 75 mile range driving in the city, and that's all this will give you. Um, but, you know, anybody that lives in a city in London, place like that, you know, you'll know you, you probably don't even do 50 miles in a week um, if you're, you know, driving within the city. Uh, but I've driven this in the city. I hate driving in the city because I'm a country bumpkin redneck at the end of the day from Wales. And driving in the city is not for me. But this in the city is hilarious. It's so nippy and everybody like waves it and, and even lets you out at junctions. You know, when's the last time you got let out in a junction in the city without pushing in front of people? But, you know, back to the conversion. So this is a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is plenty enough for a little city car range wise. Um, now, three Tesla battery, batteries in series will give you around about 75, mile, uh, 75 volts, which uh, then brings me to the motor. So the motor there is a little HPEVS AC20 motor, 75 volt um, uh, system. It gives around about 48 horsepower. Now remember that's only 18, 20 horsepower at best. Um, so that's a lot more power than the original engine, which is why we actually turn it down a little bit. But it's also still air-cooled. So the engine was air-cooled, the motor's air-cooled. So that AC20 um, bolts into the um, bumper mounts at the back. And the only thing we're missing here is the adapter plate that goes on here. Um, and then that bolts onto the uh, gearbox. So that sits actually underneath these plates here. So these plates here, they go in the engine bay and again, just bolt into the usual holes in the engine bay. And the, the adapter plate kind of sticks its head through here a little bit. But the reason why we need these plates is because we need to mount the battery box on here, but also things like the charger and uh, high voltage junction box and other bits and pieces. So charger wise, seven kilowatt charger. Um, so that sits there. And if you imagine that bot battery box there up and mounted and bolted onto here, um, that's where that lives. 
And as I say, you've got a high voltage junction box here where you've got things like your heater feed coming out of there, your DC to DC feed coming out of there, your charger coming out there. And I think on that note, it's probably time to go and have a look at it in the actual car. Now, one thing I love about our conversion to the Fiat 500 is the front because originally you had the fuel tank here so we've ended up with more luggage space now because we've got the battery pack down there with a the, uh, spare wheel and uh, 12 volt batteries to go and because the fuel tank's gone number one your luggage doesn't stink of fuel when you get it out and number two look at all the space you have compared to when the original fuel tank was in so that's the front now around to the back now, I'm in a little bit of a strange position because I've got to crawl right underneath the uh, car to show you. But this is the motor in position. You've got the motor cradle here, which bolts up to the uh, bumper mounts up there. Um, and then you can actually see on this one the adapter plate, obviously. So the motor attaches to the adapter plate, adapter plate to the gearbox. And that means it's got a flywheel and clutch in there, so you can still change gear. Now, we get a lot of questions saying, electric motors, gears, how does that work? Well the torque curve is a lot lot wider which means that you only end up using second or maybe third or second or fourth so you can start off in second gear quite sprightly around town but certainly went up to higher speeds shifted into third or fourth and that's about it so up top now now with this shot you really get an idea of the challenges with this conversion it's a tight squeeze. So in the back here, um, we've got the two Tesla modules in this battery pack here. And underneath, buried down there, we've got the charger. We've got the motor controller at that side. And then we've got the high voltage junction box here. And underneath all that is the motor. So it's a really tight squeeze, but it fits. And uh, we've probably done about 10 Fiat 500s now. And we ship these kits out to uh, companies around the world that convert uh, Fiat 500s as well. And, uh, you know, just to be clear, we don't sell these to the public. It's just the um, companies that have trained up staff that are, um, you know, qualified to, to work on high voltage um, stuff. Although it's only 75 volts, but it still can give you a fair old whack. Right, I've moved into the little blue Fiat now because I just love the interior in here. It's got a white interior on the pastel blue uh, colour. It's just a nice place to be. But not only that, look at the Fiat 500 interior, how simple and elegant it looks. Why can't all dashboards be this simple nowadays? You've just got a couple of switches here for things like you know windscreen wipers and stuff. One dial there which tells you the information that you need, like the speed, and that's it. So we've kept all that with the EV conversion and what we've done, we've put the state of charge gauge down there and the heater controls all down where the original heater controls and vent system used to be because it's an air-cooled engine, don't forget. And we've got a little plate there that goes in that space and just bolts in. So there you go. That's the interior, nice and simple. Just like me. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the little Fiat 500 and our electric conversion kit. And I personally think this is the perfect little electric city car. But I'm interested to know in the comments below, what other little classics do you think would make a fantastic city car? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.